or at least they pay me to say that. Welcome back, everybody. Time for us to go behind the headlines. And on today's show, I want to talk a little bit about the Eric Holder speech that everyone's talking about. The He spoke to the American Bar Association today in California, and the uh, speech is gaining you know ma- major headlines in the drug reform community. Uh, CNN.com titles it, Eric Holder Seeks to Cut Mandatory Minimum Drug Sentences. And in the, uh, in the story here, the interesting part is that he's calling for an end to mandatory minimum sentences for drug offenders, but not all drug offenders, just certain ones who have no ties to large-scale organizations, gangs, or cartels. And the first question that comes to mind for those of us that work in the marijuana reform movement is, what is a dispensary? Is a dispensary one of these small-time people that you don't want to have a mandatory minimum for? Or is a dispensary a large-scale organization? Is a dispensary a gang or a cartel? It'll be interesting to find out how the uh, Holder uh, Department of Justice moves forward on these prosecutions of some of the raids that have taken place in the medical marijuana states. Now, in doing some research on this uh, on this story, I was very curious about how they were going to get around the mandatory minimum sentencing. This is federal law passed by Congress in the late 80s, 86 and 88, a couple of laws that were passed that imposed these mandatory minimums. Thank you, Joe Biden. Uh, and the mandatory minimum sentences basically say that if you're caught with this amount of cocaine or this amount of heroin or this amount of uh, marijuana or a certain number of plants, you get a certain amount of time that a judge cannot lessen, that you cannot get early release for. You must serve that mandatory minimum. So how in the world is someone who is being brought before the court, being charged with growing, say, a thousand plants or having a hundred kilograms of marijuana going to avoid that mandatory minimum. Simple. Don't write it down. That's actually what's in the memo here to the U.S. attorneys. He's directing the U.S. attorneys when they go through with prosecutions on these drug offenses to simply not indicate how much weight of drug was seized. Yes, we're going to prosecute someone for transporting 50 kilos of cocaine, We just won't mention the 50 kilos part. Really? It's been that easy all along? All we ever had to do was have an attorney general say, uh, don't write that down. And people could avoid these draconian mandatory minimum sentences? My God, what took so long? But of course, Holder and the Obama administration have to skirt this regulation because it's a law. It's congressional law. And the only people that can change that are Congress. And we've seen President Obama have no luck getting anything through this Congress, uh, uh, either through the the filibustering the Senate, the the obstructionism in the House, on things like jobs bills. So what chance do you think we're going to get mandatory minimum sentences passed through a Tea Party-controlled Republican House that's all tough on crime and hates the druggies? Of course they have to go through this skirting of regulation and this little trickery to get around this. Now, the other thing that concerns me is whether or not Holder is going to set up guidelines as to exactly who qualifies for this new special wink, wink, nudge, nudge, look the other way on how much weight is involved. Again, I I mentioned the dispensaries, but is this going to be codified into some sort of guideline or is this going to be up to each individual U.S. attorney to decide who's a large scale organization, who's a gang, who's a cartel? Because if that's the case, I don't hold much more promise for this than I do the Ogden memo when they said they should not go after people that were in clear and unambiguous compliance with state laws regarding medical marijuana. We found that the U.S. attorneys in California, in Oregon, in Washington, in Colorado, in Michigan applied their own standards to this as to who was following state law. Interesting, is it not? We have the federal Department of Justice telling us who's following state laws. Kind of thought state courts and state law enforcement was in charge of that. But, uh, you know, I went to public school. What do I know about the Constitution? The other thing we've got in this uh, story is Holder calling for the expanded use of compassionate release for those elderly prisoners who served a significant portion of their sentence and did not commit a violent offense in their drug dealing, which reminds me of our friend Robert Platshorn, who we interviewed today and will be playing on Thursday. Just involved in smuggling, no violence involved whatsoever. He served 29 years of his sentence, and this was before mandatory minimum sentencing. 
How old are they going to have to be to qualify for this early release? How much of their time will they have to have served? And won't that suck for the people who are just under the limit? I'm sorry, you're only 54. <laughs> you're still going to have to stay in prison a little longer. Why is it that we would consider, you know, a certain age as when we should be compassionate for people who didn't cause violence, whose only crime was a, a drug-related crime? Now, again, these are the baby steps, and we have to accept them for what they are. We have to take steps to change this drug war, and it's a marathon, not a sprint. So I do applaud Eric Holder for making these pronouncements. I'm just going to hold my breath until we see how they've actually been implemented at the U.S. attorney level. Let's hope for the best, people. Yeah, buddy. Well, sometimes Lieber Mater surprises me, especially when I'm 2,500 miles away from her. But it's 20 after the hour, and you know what that means. Well, in the mountain time zone, it's 420, and all around the world, it's 20 after, and that means we have something very special to attend. You attend to it, too. We'll be right back after this with some Roots Monday, Daily Toker Tunes. If he said he swam to China, he would sell you South Carolina, then you 